Good afternoon. Um, hello, everyone who's joining us. This is uh, Douglas Noble from Drake Music here. Um, we're about to go live with this webinar. So welcome if you're joining us. Um, if it's your first time joining a, a Drake Music Step Up webinar, it's great to have you here. And if you've been to one before, then um, you'll know a little bit about how these work. Um, but we'll be going live imminently. So um, it's three o'clock um, and that's the start time for this webinar. So this is a Drake Music Step Up webinar, getting the best out of iPads for music. Uh, my name's Douglas Noble, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. This is the third in our current series of Step Up webinars. So some of you might have been to these before, um, but if not, if it's your first time, welcome. If you've been before, welcome back. Uh, this is part of our Think 22 Youth Music funded program that is in a minute. Um, so if you'd just like to go to the next slide, Martin. Um, this is just a little bit about how the webinar can work or will work. Um, we have a facility for people to um, send us messages through chat uh, which in, on your control bar which will either be at the top or the bottom of the screen there's a there's a icon for chat which just looks, looks like a little bubble speech bubble if you click that you should open up a chat window at the side that gives you the option to type in a chat message chat message and it really helps if you select as indicated by that big green arrow pointing at the little blue uh, panel, all panelists and attendees in your chat window, um, as opposed to all panelists. And that means that uh, everyone in the webinar can see what you're putting into the chat. And that's really important because a big element of these webinars, as people who've been to them before will know, is about how we share information amongst not just the people that are presenting, but also everyone that's taking part and there's a lot of sh cross fertilization of knowledge and understanding and questions we share our questions as well as uh, as well as responses to those so it helps the dialogue and the conversation to move forward if everyone can see what's in the chat window the other thing is you've got closed captions option um, which means you can have uh, subtitles at the bottom of your screen also on your control bar there's an option to select closed captions um, and if you click on that uh, it, and you, it gives you the option to have the closed captions on or off. Um, there is a there will be points in the webinar where, they, where we're going to be inviting questions uh, to be put to us so at that point uh, you can do that through the chat panel but also you can there's an option to raise your hand um, so in in the chat window um, there's a there's a place where you can click to raise your hand um, and then if 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 you do that we can invite you in to speak uh, and to be put on video if you're prepared to do that so uh, that's just sort of a little bit about how zoom works we're all getting a little bit more familiar with these online platforms um, but we can all learn a little bit more about them as we go forward and how we use them so just to introduce who's on the panel today or who's presenting today so it's myself Douglas Noble from Drake Music uh, my colleague Cassie Gerling um, and then we've also got um, yeah, hi Cassie and then we've also got in the background Martin Cousins from Insights Media who helps us with the setting up and running of these um, webinars uh, so thank you to Martin and we've also got Cheryl Holly from My Clear Text who's helping us with the closed captions Thank you, Shelley, making sure that those are staying uh, up to date and following the, the text so you can follow it if you need that. It's also worth saying that uh, this is being recorded, this webinar is being recorded. So if you want to watch it back, 
later or share it with other people who couldn't attend, you can do that. It's also worth saying that we moved the time of this. It was going to be at seven and we sort of moved it earlier in the day. So thanks very much for squeezing us into your day uh, at a different time. And we were going to have B Hubble with us as one of the panelists, but she couldn't attend us to do with us today. So, so Cassie's um, going to do all the presenting on, on the iPad apps. Can we just go to the next slide then, Martin? Um, so we're going to be looking at three apps today. Um, and I'm, I'm letting you know this now so that you if you wanted to get your iPad out and get ready with these. So there's Thumb Jam, Loop Sequay or Loop Sequay. There's lots of things with lots of ways of pronouncing that. Everyone's got a different take on that. And then there's also uh, Garage Band, which is what we're going to be looking at. And it's sort of a kind of practical introduction. So this is a kind of new webinar for us um, because we're doing something quite practical and hands on. Uh, and we're going to limit it to the, those three apps at this point. And also, it's a kind of entry level, really, to the, using those apps. But in the Q&A, we may be able to extend that a bit beyond that entry level. And, and I can see from looking at the names of the attendees, that we've got some people who know quite a lot about you. So I'm sure that will help everyone's knowledge move forward um, with some useful tips coming in from the participants. So just very briefly, so if we go on to the next slide, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background about Think22, because this is part of our Think22 programme, which is a four-year strategic programme funded by Youth Music, where we're working with partners in music education to develop and, and model good practice um, across the workforce and advocate for equality and inclusion um, with a focus on disabled musicians of all ages. And it's part of the... AMI, which is Alliance for Musically Inclusive England program, which uh, if you go on to the next slide, um, Martin, um, that's the program slides in, in, our, in our Think22. So we're doing advocacy, uh, we're doing workforce development and we're doing delivery and all those things kind of interrelate, interrelate uh, with a real focus on uh, working with disabled musicians, removing the barriers, to disabled musicians being part of music education at all levels as participants as leaders as strategists as um, music leaders etc etc um, and if you go on to the next slide martin this is what amy is which is what is funding this so it's a youth music program and it's the alliance for a musically inclusive england and it's a collective of organizations who are working together to increase high quality inclusive music ma making nationwide uh, so we are one of those and we all have the same two shared goals, which is increasing musically inclusive practice in music education hubs and improving the quality of music delivery for children and young people. Some of the other organisations involved include um, Bristol Plays Music, Sound Connections, Music, um, some few others here, uh, Sage Gateshead. Uh, more music, the Southern Music Hub Alliance, Brighter Sounds. So it's cut all around the country. And these uh, step up webinars are part of our AMI program within that. Um, so I'm going to move swiftly on. That's enough on the background, really. And I'm going to hand over to Cassie uh, to start talking us through some of the apps that we're introducing today. And as I said, we're We'll do a bit where we kind of introduce the app and then there'll be a space for Q&A. Q so I'll, I'll pass that over to, to Cassie. Hello, everyone. Hello. I hope you're all well. Um, welcome to this DM iPad webinar. I'm going to be taking you through some of our top recommended inclusive applications that can be used in a variety of different music education settings. If you look at the slide on the screen now, those are some of the top applications that I use and advise people to use, but as Douglas previously said, we're going to be looking at Thumb Jam, Garage Band and Loop Sequay, the three in the middle. So this is going to be more of an initial introduction to these applications and we are planning to have more in-depth webinars during this time, this 
strange time that we're in right now so do keep an eye on our social media channels and your emails for any updates and if you are interested in hosting your own zoom sessions as a music educator then there's an organization called sound and music who are doing weekly webinars on how to host your own zoom session the link for those webinars is within the slides that are popping up on your screen it's in the last slide um, so if you do have your iPad with you then please feel free to follow me through I'll try and leave some pauses and some space for you to follow what I'm doing and uh, we are also recording this session so it is going to be available for you to um, continue to look at and use as a resource and finally we are soon going to be publishing our iPad guide where myself and my colleague B Hubble are going through some of these applications in more depth so please stay tuned for updates um, regarding that so i'm going to share my screen now with you all and the first application i am going to take you through is called thumb jam so you should all be seeing my screen now says drake music this is the screen of my ipad so i'm doing this all on my ipad um yeah so the first application i'm going to take you through is called thumb jam the icon for Thumb Jam is at the bottom of my screen next to Safari. It's got um, a little quaver and a thumbprint on it. Um, so Thumb Jam is one of my favourite apps for a number of reasons. I can play lots of different instruments on it because it's got a vast instrument library. It's super inclusive and it's got a really user friendly interface. So it's great for those who have limited fine motor skills. You can use it as an instrument, you can use it as a music theory tool, you can record compositions and loops, and you can use it in a variety of settings, including Perry settings, group music making, and wider ops. So I'm gonna click on the Thumb Jam icon now. This is the Thumb Jam application. And although this application does cost eight pounds, once you do purchase Thumb Jam, you can use the license on multiple iPads. So as long as all of your iPads are using the same Apple ID, you do only have to buy the app once and you can use it on a classroom of iPads. So with the app popped up on your screen now, you will see at the top of the application is the sidebar, which has different features of programming tools. And I'm gonna go through some of those with you shortly. In the middle of the application is the instrument. Which I'm playing now. So it's on flute setting as you can see. And at the bottom left hand corner we have edit which I'm going to press now. Which has got a couple of different presets, effects, controls. And then on the right it says preferences which has got um, more options for changing the settings of the application so I think the first thing when Thumb Jam pops up on your iPad the first thing you'll want to do is change the instrument and have a look at the instrument library so in order to do that you're going to go to the top left hand corner where it says sound and this drop down menu will pop up where it says change instrument change scale volume, create instrument and download samples, but we want to change the instrument. So I'm going to press on change instrument. Follow me if you can on your own iPad. And now this will pop up. And as you can see, you can scroll through it and there's lots of different options for sounds. I'm going to choose, let's have a go on the mandolin. I'm going to press mandolin. You choose whatever you like. And now this should sound like a mandolin. And, it, and it's pretty close to a real mandolin. The quality of sounds on Thumb Jam is, is really good. Um, now you will see within the area of the screen that you can play, we have octaves are in this dark purple color. So they're all C's. The fifths are in blue. I mean, uh, turquoise. The fifth within the chosen scale, that is. And the fourths are blue. 
So in that sense, you could use this as a great tool for teaching a bit of music theory to your students. So I'm going to have a go back to the sound library, go press sound again, press change instrument again, and have a look at the different options for sounds. I'm going to go for Irish flute, could have a bit of Irish flute right now. Now that's the Irish flute, sounds pretty nice. Now I always think that a flute sounds really good with um, reverb on it, so I will show you how you can add slight reverb to this flute. You go down to the bottom left where it says edit. and then press effects and then you will see that this menu pops up now we've got reverb delay low pass filter and underneath the reverb it says room size and level i'm just going to slide my finger across where it says level to increase the level of reverb there we go, and press done. And now my Irish flute should have a nice amount of reverb. So that's how you add a bit of reverb onto your sound. Now one of the other things you might want to do when you've chosen your sound and added a little bit of an effect, you might want to decide what key you would like your Irish flute to be in. Right now, I know it's in C major, well, because I can hear the notes, but also if you see at the bottom of the screen, there are the notes written out, C to C. And as I said before, the octaves are all purple, the fourths are all darker blue, and the fifths all turquoise. But if I wanna change into a different key, I go to the top of the screen, next to sound, on the right hand side of sound there is a sharp and a flat button. So I'm going to press that, and this will pop up the key toggle menu. Now the key that the app is programmed to play in is highlighted in yellow. So if I wanna change this key to a different key, I just choose the key that I want, so I'm going to choose F. And then to get rid of this toggle menu in, in, on the screen, I need to press the sharp and flat button, which is next to sound again. Okay, so that is the sharp and flat button that is next to where it says sound. I'm going to press that and boom, it disappears. So that's great, we've changed it to F, but it's still in F major. So I may want to change the scale, may want to change it to F minor. To do that, we go back to sound, which is the top left, press sound. This menu comes up, and then you guessed it, press change scale. And here we have the option of all these different scales. We have the more traditional scales, chromatic, major, minor, harmonic, minor, but we also have more complex, intricate scales, um, lots of world music scales, blues scales. And so say if you're, you want to teach, you know, your students a, the, a blues Phrygian scale, click on blues Phrygian. And now at the bottom, your students can now see all the notes that are within F blues Phrygian scale. See? So that's how you change the scale, the key, and choose an instrument within Thumb Jam, which are the things that you may want to do as soon as that app pops up. So you might be thinking, oh, well, I'm a Perry Sax teacher. 
how is this um, how is this application relevant to me? It is completely relevant to you because you could use this in a wider up setting. So, for instance, if you are having to teach a group a group of children the saxophone, you may have one young person in your class who's not engaging with the saxophone. You could program Thumb Jam to play to sound like a saxophone, and this could be the initial step to getting them to engage in the lesson. You could also use it within that context if you have a young person who sometimes gets taken out of the music session because they have limited fine motor skills and they can't play the saxophone, you can use this application and that young person doesn't have to be taken out of your lessons, which, which shouldn't be happening. You could also use it in terms of um, as a tool for teaching, for teaching music theory or teaching fingering techniques. So I'm going to show you how you do that. So let's, first of all, I'm going to change the scale again. So if you're with me, just to recap, let's attempt to change the scale. Okay, go to the top left hand corner where it says sound. Great. Change scale. Great. Choose a major scale. I'm going to choose a major scale just to illustrate to you this what I'm trying to show you. Major. Done. Okay, now we have to change the note of the scale. So I'm going to go to the sharp and flat next to sound. I'm going to change it to C. And then I'm going to press the sharp and flat again. Cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the amount of notes that are on the screen. Right now we can see two octaves. I want to change it to one octave. So in the middle, at the top, it says oct, and there's a little plus and a little minus. But to the left of that, there says span, and there's a little plus and a little minus. I'm going to press minus. Boom, and now we've got one octave of Irish flute playing. But remember I said I'm going to show you how you can use thumb jam to teach fingering on a saxophone. So I'm going to change the sound to saxophone. Sound, change instrument. Let's go to tenor sax. Cool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the background image. So, bottom right hand corner where it says preferences. Boom. Okay. Now we're going to go to options. And this will come up. I'm going to scroll down till I can see background image. And I'm going to press custom. Now I have a picture of saxophone fingerings here. Okay. And now it may be slightly out of sync um, because of Zoom on your screen at the moment, but you should be able to in Thumb Jam align each note with the correct fingering. And then I've made a little drawing of um, where they are on the stave. So if you think about it, you could apply this to violin, you could apply this to any instrument that, you know, requires fingering techniques. Um, and that is how this could be relevant to you within a Perry setting. So does anybody have any questions? That is just a quick introduction to this application. If you do have any questions, then do let me know. I'm going to stop. I'm going to go back to Zoom, see if anybody comes up with any questions. I'm going to stop sharing.
I've got a question, Cassie. This is Douglas here. Hi, Douglas. Hi. Um, you don't have to do it right now, but at some point, can you show us the guided access function? Because um, you talked about musicians with limited motor skills. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the guided access element of it is quite an interesting way of supporting musicians with limited motor skills to yeah. play on an iPad. Yeah, I'll show you that straight after this. Has anybody else got any more questions to do with Dump Jam? Fabina Chavez, I can see. <laughs> Would this work with guitar fingering tabs? Ask Craig, asks Craig. You could, you could have this work with, um, guitar fingering tabs if you create you're gonna to have to create your own image of the correct fingering and then import that image to the thumb jam screen using the exact same uh, method that i just showed you there and you'd be able to do that let's see have you got time to talk about how the loop fabia first fabiana um she's she's typed she said i'm blind i use voiceover so can do we want uh do you want fabia do you want to ask your question is your question about using voiceover is that is that what your question is sorry or do you want to be put on mic so you can ask your question Cassie. Martin, can you just turn on Fabiana's mic to see if she's got a question she wants to ask? Hello. Fabiana. Hi. Fabiana. Hi. Nice to meet you all here. Um, well, my question is about uh, accessibility in terms of visual impairment. I'm a music teacher and uh, I'm blind. And also I teach uh, pupils with um, other disabilities as well. But uh, what I need to, to know, um, especially, if these, all these apps are accessible for the blind. Mm. I think there, there are some that are, but I think I'd like to probably open up that question to our wider DM network to get a correct, specific answer for you, and we can, we can get that answer to you. Absolutely, Fabian. I can see a lot of questions coming in here, and we probably won't be able to deal with them all, and your question included, we can take this back to our wider team to get the responses. Let's take one more question on on the thumb jam, though. Um, there's quite a few that, that have been coming in. Um, probably the fairest way is to pick up uh, the, the, the one that came in after Fabiana, which was David, um, uh, which is, I'm just scrolling back. I noticed in F major, it had a sharp, not B flat. Can anything be done about that? Again, that might be very specific. Yeah, I, I think that, um, yeah, with Thumb Jam, there are some, you know, tweaks that could be done to the app. Sometimes, you know, it, it does describe things as an A sharp instead of a, a B flat. Um, but if you use the technique I just showed you of adding your own um, background image to the notes, then you could create your own image with the correct notes and use it as a music theory tool in that way. Okay, um, and as we said, we'll, 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 we'll keep a record of all these questions and we might be able to expand on them because they're all really helpful. Mm. Um, there's somebody called Linda who wants to come on the microphone as well and you've had your hand up for a while, Linda, so I don't want to, you to feel that we've not noticed you. Um, yeah. Turn on your microphone. Okay, thanks very much. So we use a bespoke 
a tab system for my son's button accordion. It's a diatonic button box. So from what you've said there, all we have to do is create a picture yeah. for a note and then associate that picture with the, the note somehow in the background. Is that? Yes. Are yes. instructions, are there more explicit instructions about how to how to do that? Because yes. when, you, when you did it, it brought up the whole, the whole thing, didn't it? Yeah. So we are, um, my colleague, uh, B Hubble and myself, we have made an iPad guide, which we are going to uh, release shortly. And we haven't included the details of that specific function, but we can work on that and include that within the iPad guide because it is a really useful tool. Um, yeah. So yeah, if you stay, um, you stay tuned for updates about the iPad guide and when it's going to be released, then that information will be in there for you. Brilliant, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Questions so are really helpful in terms of that iPad guide. Mm. Uh, because it's establishing a whole load of queries that we can uh, add into it in terms of some of the specifics. Yeah. I can see that somebody called Amy in the chat box. <laughs> Linda, would you mind um, mute? Oh, thanks. Yeah, so Amy's put a very helpful comment in about the sharp and flat issue. Okay, great. So if everybody is all good, I'm going to move on to a different application. Um, so I'm going to start sharing my screen again. Thank you for your questions. They were great. Um, so now I'm going to move on to guided access, which is something that Douglas mentioned. Now what guided access is, it is a tool that you can use to um, create essentially blocks on certain areas of the screen so that when you give your young people the application to make music with, they're not changing all the settings themselves and going on YouTube and taking pictures and all, all of those kinds of things. So guided access is, um, something that you'll be using all the time if you include this within your practice. So I'm going to show you how to do that. You need to go to your main settings within your iPad, which looks like this. It's on the bottom right of this collection of squares. Settings, I'm going to press it now. Settings. And we're going to scroll up to general which is on the left hand side can you see there general general this will come up now i'm going to scroll down on the right hand side oh general Bear with me one moment. Sorry, I'm going to go to access accessibility, which is actually underneath for underneath general. There we go, accessibility. And all of these options will come up. And can you see at the bottom where it says general, that's where I got general from, it says guided access. So if I click guided access, my guided access is already on but a lot of people, on a lot of your iPads, it will actually be off. So if you click guided access on, then you have enabled guided access. Now, if I were to go back to an application like Thumb Jam, I'm just gonna change this background image. Okay. And if I want to add guided access onto this so that my young people can't touch the top where all the settings are, they can't touch edit down here and they can't touch preferences and they can't change stuff that I've set up. 
I will triple click the home button, which is actually not on the screen. It is the circle, which is off the screen. So I'm going to triple click it. One, two, three. Oh. One moment. One, two, three. And this will come up. Now, can you see how there's a grey box over the top, over the left, bottom left, and over the bottom right? That's because I've actually created this already, and you can change this so that you might not want them to play B and C. So if I block that off, and then all you have to do is press start, and guided access will be enabled. And you can, and that's a really important tool. So I'm just going to press cancel because I need to be able to touch my iPad. Um, so yeah, that's guided access. That will also be included within the iPad guide. And it's not just this app that you can use guided access on, it's any app or any thing on the iPad. So that's guided access. So right, the next thing I'm gonna show you, because we're, we're short on time, is GarageBand. Now GarageBand is particularly relevant during this time as a lot of our children and young people will have iPhones or iPads around at home and this application is already installed on iPhones and iPads and it is free. So I'm, the icon for GarageBand is if you can see the little guitar, orange and yellow guitar, which is the fourth icon from the left. There we go. Now, the reason why GarageBand is so great is because as well as being an instrument, it's also kind of an introductory level DAW, Digital Audio Workstation. Um, so you can, as well as play instruments using GarageBand's touch instruments, which I am scrolling through now, you can also write songs, write beats, and compose. So it's a great composition tool. But I'm going to show just one function of GarageBand, which is the autoplay function and how to customize your own chords. And this is particularly relevant for teachers who may just wanna have a backing track quickly playing in the background. If you're doing an improvisation game and you just need something that moves, that stays on a C chord, or if you're doing, um, if you're quickly putting together a song and you need to quickly put together, move between chords, then this is what this feature is great for. So, I've clicked on GarageBand, we've got here, these are called the touch instruments. I'm going to scroll to, so I, pressed, I clicked on bass, which is not what I meant to do. I'm going to scroll along to the keys, because I'm a keys player, that's my instrument, that's what I want to play right now. So I'm going to, here we've got keyboard. I'm going to press smart piano, okay? Smart piano and this screen will come up. So that was me just playing through the chords on the screen. So right now we've got a grand piano sound, which sounds lovely. I might want to change the sound, so I'm going to press grand piano, and I'm going to change it to something a little more my vibe. I'm going to change to a smooth cloud. Yeah, that sounds better. Great. So this feature, which is called autoplay, if you see on the screen, there is a circle that has off the numbers one to four and autoplay. I'm going to move. Can you see the dot moving? I'm going to move it to one of those numbers. I'm going to choose number four and play. Just decided to change the sound. So right now, you can't see what I'm pressing right now. I literally just pressed the C chord once Removed my hand and it's playing on its own. 
So that's the way you can just have a little loop playing in the background. Um, and then you can teach improvisation from there or and different activity that you might have in mind. So as you can see, I've programmed this to play the first five chords within C major, C, D minor, E minor, F minor, um, E flats, not in C major, nor is F minor. So yeah, we have to change these chords. So I'm gonna go to the top right hand corner where there is a spanner. It's next to the question mark. So I'm clicking on the spanner. This drop down menu will pop up. I'm going to press edit chords. And now the screen will have changed to this. I'll give, I'll leave it a couple of seconds for you to catch up with me. Now on the top of the screen, we've got where it says custom chords. We can customize the chords. We need to ensure that the chord that we want to change is highlighted in blue. So I'm happy with C, I'm happy with D minor, I'm happy with E minor. I want to change this to F major. Okay? So I'm going to scroll back to F major. Cool. Let's change to F major now. I'm going to change that. And I'm going to leave these three chords with nothing on because I just want to have five chords. Press done. And that's how you can customise the chords. Now, there is, a, there is another level to this. You can either have this playing on in the background or you can create a little recording, a little loop. So I'm going to super quickly show you how to do that. I'm going to press the red dot. The red dot is always record. And everywhere in life you see a red dot, it's record. Okay, record. track I can play in the background for my students to improvise over. Cool. And once you've programmed your chords, if you then want to change the instrument on GarageBand, the chords will stay the same. So if I go next to my songs, where there's like three squares here, it's the browser function. I'm going to scroll across and move along to, oh, not that one. Not that one. I'm going to move along to strings, smart strings. See, it's the same chords that we chose. So I'm going to see what the strings sound like. And that's just a really quick introduction to GarageBand's browser menu of the touch in instruments, which is this, and how to use the autoplay feature within GarageBand and how to customize your chords. And of course, this is a lot of information for, for one ep webinar. As I said, we're gonna have more in-depth webinars. Um, and I would like to show you one more app, but there may be time for one question before I switch apps. So I'm gonna start sharing my screen now. If anybody has any questions I, for, regarding GarageBand, then let me know. We've got a question from Craig. Um, yeah. Can we get Craig on audio, Martin? Yeah. Craig Howlett. Yeah. 
you should be coming up now, Craig, if you want to ask your question. Oh, I see you've typed it. Can the MIDI from autoplay be edited afterwards to add variation? The autoplay function, it does, you can switch between the autoplay function and play different autoplay MIDIs, but, um, and then you can record that, but you can't change the pre-programmed autoplay MIDI, if that makes sense. I'll quickly show you what I mean now. So I'm gonna start sharing my screen again. Screen. Share screen. Start broadcast. Okay, I'm gonna go back to GarageBand. So, if I'm just playing autoplay, I can switch between different versions of autoplay by either choosing one. Two. The only so you can't edit that, but if you do a, a recording of of then you can see in the recording here, you can edit the recording here. So if you're using autoplay live, then you can't change it. But if you record the autoplay, then if you go into this setting, then you can then further edit. The autoplay. I hope that answers your question, Martin, in a roundabout way. So I'll quickly show you now. So I'm going to do a quick recording. Okay. So now you see where it says cinematic here. That is the recording that we've just made. And I'll double click on it, press edit, and then I can edit the MIDI here. But you can't do that live, if that makes sense. If you want to just have it playing in the background, then autoplay is what autoplay is. So I hope that answers your question, Martin. And um, now I'm going to show you the final app, a quick introduction to one of my favorite apps, which is called, I call it Loop Seki, everybody else is calling it Loop Seque, which I think is a bit of a funny way. I prefer Loop Seki. So here we are, Loop Seki. Um, this is essentially a drum machine, but it's a drum machine that you can mix with. So you can create mixes afterwards and export those. And it, it's just really cool. So if the app, when the app pops up, the app is to the left of GarageBand. It's this purple circular thing here. I'm going to press on it. This screen will pop up. So we want a new project. I'm going to press new project. I'm going to create an empty project. And this is what the app looks like. You have four colored circles. One, two, three which I'm moving through and you have a timer moving around and if you want to make a beat it's pretty simple you just start entering dots into these circles so I'm, I'm going to quickly make a beat for you Nice little beat, nice little beat made very quickly. Young people, in my experience, they love this app because the sounds are so cool. Now, a couple of things we might want to edit that we've made that nice little beat. If I go to the top right hand corner, 
we have the option of changing the sample set. So let's hear it. The sample set, which is currently raindrops. If I want to change that to something else, I'm going to press the little arrow next to it. Um, might change it to Neon Dream. So let's listen to what it sounds like. That was my favourite one, Lazy Keys. So I'm going to stick with Lazy Keys. And now I'm going to change the BPM. Um, I might want it a little bit faster. So if you see where it says BPM, I can either tap my preferred BPM or I can change it manually, the numbers. So I'm going to change it manually. This is more my vibe, more UK garage. Now, remember I said that you can mix on this app. Another great feature of this app, Loop Seki, is that you can do brilliant mixes. Um, so I'm gonna, to, in order to get to the mix view, I'm going to move across the top to this screen. Now you can see we've got reverb, delay, filter and a repeater. So I'm just going to switch the circles back on. If you notice to switch the circles on, I'm pressing these X's at the bottom of the screen. So I switch the green one on, switch the green one off, switch the green one on. Purple, yellow, red. So now I'm just going to mess around with the delay and uh, reverb which is over here. Can you see me pressing them there? Pressing them on, pressing them off. Pressing it on, pressing it off. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a little, I'm trying not to talk while it's playing, so now I'm gonna do a little mixing, okay? Here we go. Sequay, that's mixing in Loop Sequay, creating a nice little fast um, drum beat for your young people. Um, and also, this is also a great uh, music theory tool as well, because you could, for instance, look at this yellow circle. I'm going to take all of those dots off. Teach your students, you know, about crotchets. Yeah, here we go. Just so you know, often when I use this with young people, what they do is this. They just want to press every single button and fill up the whole thing, which is not going to sound nice. If that happens, they will do that. If that happens, then you say, can you see what kind of shapes you can make when you take away, when you take away squares? And then they'll come up with something really interesting. So that is a really uh, quick introduction to loop to loop sequay. And just to show you quickly, if I made a beat on loop sequay and I wanted to play something on thumb jam, I can have loop sequay playing.
So you can use it in conjunction with different applications. So I think, oh, we've, we've only got six minutes left, so I'm going to stop talking. And if anybody has any questions, then put your hand up. And also, if you just write your questions in the comments section, then we're going to go through them and provide answers. Um, yeah. I've got a couple of questions that I've, I've been sort of following. Um, mm. Lisa's saying uh, uh, she can see the screen but can't get mine to can't get it to play and then says is there a play button yes uh, yes so I'll quickly show you where the where the play button is I won't share my screen but Lisa if you go to the top right hand corner wait let me quickly share the screen hold on one second uh, if you go to the top right hand corner of your screen which looks like uh, this um, loops away top right hand corner there you see there's a pause button there and a play button thanks for that question that's a very important question um, so Douglas any more questions I'm gonna get one more um, which mm -hmm. is from Richard um, saying that share music they use Beatwave and yeah. what are the kind of differences between Beatwave and Loop Sequay or Loop Sequay or <laughs> anyway, what's what's the main differences? Um I don't really use Beatwave, but I do know that some of my colleagues do. So we can put that out to the wider DM network and get back to you um with what what the main differences are and uh, what are the you know pros and cons of either or. But yeah, thanks for that question. Great. Um, Cassie, that's been really fantastic presentation. Um, I'm just going to go back to one other, actually, that I just remembered, which is Craig. Mm. Um, I was asking on the garage band about the presets. Auto yeah. Play. yeah. Is it possible to save those and then use them to jam over at a later date? Do you mean save the autoplays that you... Okay, save the edited autoplays. Is this the same, Craig, that asked about the editing before? I think, that, I think that's the question. I don't think that's possible on GarageBand, if anybody has, else has figured out a way to do that. But I think that the autoplays are set. The only way that you would be able to do that is saving, um, you know, is recording your edited autoplay and then you could change the instrument but I don't think it's possible to change the autoplay like globally for all of the for all of the um, touch instruments um, but yeah but if anybody else knows a way to do that then do share that's great thank you thank you Cassie we're, we're running out of time so if we haven't managed to get to your questions I'm sorry about that um, but if you there's a little bit more time now so if you've got questions that are still burning chuck them into the chat um so that we can respond to them so we'll keep the chat running for a few more minutes um while i take you through a couple of sort of closing slides but, um great presentation Cassie. thank you so much um so we're not the only organization that um uses ipads and shares resources out there. Um, Transformance Music have got some great um, resources, um, some that they've been putting out recently. And I'll, in a minute, I'll just cut and paste those massively long URLs into the chat box so that you can have them, or you can photograph, you can also photograph your screen. Um, then there's also Sound and Music um, tutorials that Cassie uh, mentioned about using Zoom happening every Friday. So I'll post that link into the chat as well. Um, somebody else has just, Carrie, thank you, has just shared a really helpful link in the chat box. And also if you go to Drake Music um, blog site, there's lots of uh, really great blogs in there about using iPads, um, about apps and accessibility of iPads, particularly with a focus on working with disabled musicians. So 
have a look there. So I'm just putting into the chat now. That's the Transformance Music mm -hmm. link. And Carrie, um, Carrie Leonard, I love your book, The Improvised Approach. So yeah, I would really highly recommend that book for using Thumb German. And yeah, so thanks for sharing that, Carrie. Yeah, Carrie, Carrie's got lots of great uh, ideas. So yeah, absolutely. And thanks for joining us, Carrie, and sharing that. We really appreciate it. Um, it's all about the sharing of the knowledge in this. Um, so I'm just chucking in those links into the chat. Um, while I'm talking, um, which is the transformance music and uh, the sound and music. Um, can we just go to the last slide, Martin? Because there's another link. Um, so um, obviously big thank you to Cassie and for everyone to attend, for everyone to, for attending. It really helps us if you give us feedback um, because we're funded by youth music, we really want to understand and feed back to youth music how, how we're getting on, what we're learning, what goes well, what doesn't go, go so well. So there's a, a feedback survey um, on, on that slide at the top. There is a, it's a short URL. I've just put it into the chat box as well. Um, and so it'd be really grateful if you go online and complete that feedback survey. It only takes you... 10 minutes to about 10 minutes to do that and anything you say is really useful um there's somebody who's had a hand up for a little while uh called jelena um and hello yes hi hi Hi, hello. Yes, I just wanted to have all those applications on just a smartphone because I don't have iPhone and neither have iPad yet, so they do know anything about it. So do you have an iPhone? Uh, no, no, I just got a smartphone, Samsung, you know. The, okay. So your yeah. Android, your Android. Yes, yes, Android, that's the one, yes. Yeah, yeah. Some mm -hmm. of the applications are compatible with Android, but uh, unfortunately, a, a lot of the ones that I use on a regular basis aren't. Um, we mm -hmm. can share um, which ones are and which ones are not, but there, there, are, op there are options for Android applications. Um, I just, off the top of my head, can't remember. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so we can share which ones are and which are not, yeah. That'd be great. Fantastic. Thank you. I mean, I will invest in some in it in the future, but just at the at the moment. Okay. Thank you. That's great. Uh, thank you. Uh -huh. So I think. Hi, it's Martin here. I, I'm not sure where Douglas has gone. Um, just. <laughs> oops. Are you still are you still with us, Douglas? Come back in. I was just thrown out. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, yeah. I think it was my Wi-Fi failing. Okay, so there's a final wrap-up question from um, Elle, which is about signing up for the 22nd of April webinar. We haven't gone live with the sign-up yet. Um, we, we literally um, decided to do that yesterday <laughs> and lined up all the people we need. So we, we will put out on social media um, mm -hmm. for the week to sign up on that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for asking. That, L. So that will be on our Facebook page, Twitter, um, on our Twitter, Drake Music Facebook page, but Drake Music Twitter, and we'll make sure it goes out everywhere. And and we can include it in our follow up email to all you that have attended today as well. For those that don't use social media. So again, I sorry I disappeared there. Um, this is the interesting experience of doing everything online. We're very, very reliant on the stability of our uh, uh, internet connections, which do ever so, sometimes they do fail us. So thanks everyone for attending and we hope to see you at the next one and keep safe. Yeah, thank you everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.